you look in the Xinjiang region, which is East Turkestan, East Turkestan uh, has been an area in uh, that Asian area of China for hundreds of, or over 100 years. Yet when the Communist Party came in, they took it over. Uh, recently, they renamed it Xinjiang, which means new territory. And I bring that up because it's home to a Muslim population, the Uyghurs, the Kyrgyzstans, uh, the Kirks, that are being suppressed by China. I think we've all heard of the concentration camps that are going up all over China. We've done hearings. I, I sit on the Foreign Affairs Committee. I chaired the Asia Pacific Subcommittee last year, the ranking member this year. And we've had hearing after hearing on the human rights suppression, um, just the terrible things that they're doing over there. And when we looked into it, we have enough reports to feel this is true, that what they're doing is China has interned over a million Uyghurs, uh, other ethnic groups, the Kirks, uh, the Turkestans, they put them into these so-called re-education camps, but they're not at re-education camps, they're concentration camps. They have armed crematoriums around the country associated with these camps. And my question when we were in uh, the Foreign Affairs Committee doing this hearing, why do you need an armed crematorium? You know, the people that are supposed to be there are supposed to have passed away. But we uh, recently met with some people that uh, I found it very interesting. Um, the people we met with were from East Turkestan. They had a Cossack person with them who had just won an award from Mike Pompeo, uh, First Lady uh, Melania Trump, uh, for her Courage, Women of Courage Award. And what we found, listening to the story, is this family, an educated family, the husband was a school teacher, the wife was a medical doctor, practicing. I mean, they were, they were uh, model citizens. Well, the husband saw what was happening to his relatives, what was happening in, in the Xinjiang area. So he got passports, took his, his self and his kids out. The wife, the doctor, applied for a passport. China would not allow her to, to go. And so they felt she needed to go to the re-education camp. This is a lady that's a doctor that was practicing. And China puts them in there saying it was a threat to our country. She was a terrorist. They need to be re-educated. What China is trying to do is erase other cultures. Um, we've just seen this over and over again. And so when we spoke to these people that were in our office this week, I asked them, I said, do you have reports of abuses? And they went on and on about the abuses, how they strap people in chairs, they electrocute them. They torture them, pull out their fingernails. Uh, the women were being raped. People were being, I can't say murdered, because they said they would disappear and never be seen again. And these are things, you know, it's not just hearsay. We've got reports from all kinds of magazines, all kinds of researchers. Um, uh, here's one from Radio Free Asia. China secretly transferring Uyghur detainees from Xinjiang to Shangxi. Uh, province prisons. And it goes on talking about ethnic Uyghurs held in political re-education camps. I'm going to put quotes around that because they're not re-education camps. They're concentration camps because the Chinese Communist Party is the highest of the hierarchy. There can be nothing higher than that. And if you have a religion and you have a deity above that, that puts the Chinese Communist Party and people like Xi Jinping in fear because they don't know how to control free thought. Um, these people are being sent to prisons in those provinces. China to address an overflow in the overcrowded camps where up to 1.1 million Uyghurs and other Muslim ethnic minorities accused of harboring strong religious views and political incorrect ideas have been held since April of 2017. This is something that's been going on not just three years, but longer than that, but it's coming to light. Um, we've asked their ambassadors, have they had the Western, Demo or Western press in there, free and open presses? And they said, oh, no, there's no need. These aren't going on, but we know they're going on. Uh, this is just one report. I have another one here, uh, Madam Speaker. Information concerning uh, China killing prisoners to harvest organs. 
This is something we've heard over and over again. We've heard, uh, we've had hearings on this. This is a multi-billion dollar industry in China. Um, it happens to anybody that doesn't agree with the, the Communist Party. They get picked up. They get imprisoned. Health checks are done. In fact, this uh, person that was in our office is a medical doctor. She would do the health checks on these young Muslim men, and they would get a red check if they were healthy. And in the darkness of night, they would disappear, never be to be seen again. Um, the China Tribunal, which was a tribunal put together to look into this, has published its final judgment. The tribunal concluded that forced organ harvesting has been committed for years throughout China on a significant scale, and the tribunal had no evidence that the significant infrastructure show, associated with China's transplantation industry has been dismantled and absent a satisfactory explanation as to the source of readily available organ concludes that the forced organ harvesting continues still today. I don't know how a civilized world can tolerate such atrocities. And when I see of the armed crematoriums or the Uyghurs being taken from their homes, forced from their homes, forced into a concentration camp, and then being rented out or sold as chattel to manufacturers, and this is well documented, um, I don't know how we can tolerate that or how we can look at our trade policies to do those kind of deals with a country that works like that. If they treat their own people that way, how do we expect they're going to treat any of us? Um, we've talked about Tibet. We've talked about Xinjiang, the East Turkestan, the purging of individuals, the social credit scores, the coercion and intimidations. I haven't touched on the theft of intellectual property. There's over $600, million, $600 billion of intellectual property theft um, that goes and erodes economies all over the world. I want to read an article here just real briefly. China compels Uyghurs to work in shoe factory that supplies Nike. And I don't bring Nike's name out. Put a ding on Nike. It says that the workers in standard issue blue jackets glue and press together about 8 million pairs of Nike sneakers each year at the Qingdong uh, Shoe Company, a Nike supplier for more than 30 years and one of America's brand's largest factories. They churn out pair after pair of shoes, the shocks, with their springy uh, shock absorbers in the heels and the signature Air Max, plus seven other lines of sports shoes. But hundreds of these workers do not choose to be there. They are ethnic Uyghurs from China, uh, western Xinjiang region, which again means new territory they renamed for East Turkestan, sent here by local authorities in groups of 50 to toil far from home. After intense international criticism from the Communist Party's campaign to forcibly assimilate the uh, mostly Muslim Uyghurs minority by detaining more than a million people in re-education camps, party officials said last year that most have graduated, graduated from a, a work camp. And again, if you talk to these people, I've talked to pharmacists, I've talked to lawyers, I've talked to engineers, I've talked to doctors. They didn't need to be re-educated. What China wanted to do was intimidate them and, and basically brainwash them from their habits of a, of a religion, of uh, practicing their religion, um, and become good model Chinese citizens that bow down to the Communist Party. But there's new evidence to show that the Chinese authorities are moving Uyghurs into government-directed labor um, around the country as part of the central government's Xinjiang aid initiative for the party. This would help meet its poverty alleviation goals. And again, this is a doctor. They're, they're saying we need to alleviate their um, poverty goals. But also, it is to further control the Uyghur population and break familial the Uyghur workers, um, they're afraid or unable uh, to interact. The, the Uyghur workers at these facilities are afraid or unable to interact with anyone in this town where they went to north of Guangdong beyond the most superficial of transactions 
at the stalls or in the local stores where they go. They won't talk to anybody. The people at these towns says everyone know the Uyghurs did not come here on their own free will. They were brought here, said one of the front, uh, fruit sellers at her stall. The Uyghurs had to come because they didn't have an option. The government sent them here. Uh, another vendor told the reporters that they were sent here forcibly. Um, the, the report that we read uh, did not ask their names out of concern of their safety, so they could not discuss the issue. Um, like I said, we met with Mrs. Saragul Sotbi, an ethnic Kazakh from East Turkestan that today is now called, as I said, Xinjiang. And she's the one that shared this with her. She is a true freedom fighter.